up here now. And here's the Stad Velodrome, where host Marseille went into an early lead. 17 minutes gone, Johan Lashaw on Jero Lewa, and Captain Frank Mabur scores. Marseille on a good recent run. Roberto was later seen to tire injured. Stefan Pedron setting up the Nantes equaliser. Nantes, of course, already five points clear at the top before this match. El Hadji Diouf with the equaliser, their Senegalese striker. And although Ibrahima Bakayoko did have the ball in the net in the second half for Marseille, Nantes would still prevail in this one. The linesman flag. to the pitch well gang on though the stad the ruderu was one stadium that did manage to survive the elements this a real basement battle 13th place gang on against Sidon. both sides in desperate need of points Sidon, of course who beat leon at 2-1 in the week and this would be such a hard-fought match. It was the home side who threatened early on and really should have taken the lead there. But for slightly, slightly shaky finishing from Roman Ferrier. Florent Maluda involved with the ball across goal. With Gangon pushing forward. They would eventually take the lead through Maluda. That goal timed in the 17th minute. All manner of deflections going on. The initial shot going wide from Barre. But Maluda, quick thinking, forces the ball past Renio in the set on goal. Well, mediocre form recently, Gangon. Three draws, two defeats. And a draw in their last six. Should have gone two goals clear there. And indeed, it really was all the home side in the first half. Florin Maluda in the thick of things and only a goal line clearance from Richard Jusierski denied a second Gangom goal. Well, now it was the away side's turn to push forward. Well, much bonding going on in the Saddam ranks as they look for inspired efforts in the second half and things would certainly get better for them. That was a cheeky effort from the edge of the box from Pierce and Diafi. Goalkeeper nowhere near it. Fabrice Fiorezi with the corner here for Gangon. And so close to a second goal. Yannick Barre couldn't believe there that the ball hadn't crossed the line, but it certainly didn't. Still Gangon trying to hold on to this slender 1-0 advantage. But things would get worse for the home side. Not at that particular moment when NDAP was denied once again by Ganoa in the Gangam goal. But it was in the final quarter of an hour that the away side would really turn the screw. That's not before Gangam wasted another fine chance, though. Really good save from Patrick Renio. Not such top quality defending. Fabrice Fiorezi will feel that he should have scored there. But Renio was to inadvertently help this particular sit-on attack, which resulted 
in the equaliser by the Senegalese striker Henri Camara. 76 minutes gone here. And with three wins in their last six matches, Zidane were dreaming about maintaining their resurgence. Just four wins in 18 games all season before tonight. But that record would be improved. And it would be improved by that man Camera. A dream evening for him. How about that for a winning goal? Henri Camera, only one thing in his mind, even though he was pushed wide here. Embarrassing at Gerard Ganua. And that will be 2 1 Sidon. The home side, though, as you might expect, coming close to getting the equaliser in the closing stages. Once again, it will be Patrick Renio who came to the rescue there. And, well, that's exactly what the victory meant to the Sidon management. They climbed from 14th up to 11th after this vital 2-1 away win. Et je dirais même au fur et à mesure des rentrées de mes remplaçants, j'ai un véritable banc, j'ai des gens qui sont capables de s'intégrer dans un système et de m'amener quelque chose d'intéressant, ils l'ont prouvé ce soir. And Henri Camera, the hero of the hour. 2-1 to Sidon, the final score at the Stade de Ruderou. Right. Well, to the Stade Louis II in Monaco. They took on 12th place, Ren, a real mid-table battle this one. Monaco in 15th place prior to this match. And it will be a dream start for the Monegas. Vladimir Jugovic, some 25 yards out, a tremendous effort. When the ball broke loose to Sidiman Camera, he still had a bit to do there, Camera, but managed to steer his header beyond Fabian de Beck in the Ren Garwell. A dream start for Monaco, 1-0, just three minutes gone. Three defeats and three draws in their last six matches for Monaco. Hardly inspiring form. And prior to this one, hadn't won at home since the 27th of October when they beat Lyon 2-1. But a good first half performance here by Monica. Shimani Nonda, their top scorer, wanting to go it alone there. And denied at that time by De Beck. Ren weren't without chances of their own, though, in the first period. The ball would eventually fall here to Jocelyn Gulvenek in the area. And Flavio Roma, the Italian goalkeeper for Monaco, standing up well there to deny Gulvenek. Midway through first half now, Wren took that long to get into their stride and when they did, the likes of ex not midfielder Olivier Monterubio were making inroads into the Monaco defence on the right flank this narrowly avoided being an own goal by De Beck An exercise in shoddy defending here from Lamin Diata all the time in the world. Poor control. And camera brought down here by De Beck. Monaco penalty and just a yellow card for De Beck. Counts himself pretty fortunate there not to see red. Lamin Diata though takes the blame really for losing the ball in a suicidal area. And De Beck hugely lucky to stay on the field. Shabani Nonda would step up to face De Beck from the penalty spot. And this is what happened. Fine stop. Wren still in the match. Still, Monaco came forward. Once again, shoddy defending really from Wren. Truly poor finish there. Marcello Gallardo 
done the hard bit in seeing the defender fall over in front of him, but completely missing the target. Well, Didier Deschamps, it's not been the easiest introduction to the world of management for him. Monaco fans, not many of them inside the Louis Second Stadium, some 10,000. As Olivier Etchifani there, replaced by Picon. But indeed, those Monaco fans, as recently as last summer, saw their side win the title. It's been all downhill ever since. Well, Monaco pushing forward yet again. And Brent once again failing to clear. The effort wide from Suleiman Kamara, the Senegalese striker. Well, Ren coming forward, alarming holes at the back. From Monaco's point of view there. The ball driven wide by Picon. But we're to hear more about the substitute Picon before this match is over. At the other end, though, Monaco coming forward and getting the second goal they so desired. Shabani Nanda with his ninth goal of the campaign, their top scorer. And that doubled Monaco's money on 67 minutes. Scorer of the first goal, Salamana Kamara turning provider this time. Skinning Lamine Diata. Clinical from Nanda. Good spell this though for Ren, coming straight on the attack. And the ball in the end headed across goal, but unable to be forced in by Frederick Picon. Cyril Shapley with the ball in. And Monaco a touch lucky there. Twenty-five minutes to go now. Shimani Nanda, all his own work, improvisation in fashioning the chance, and able though to force the ball beyond the back. And Ren would then get themselves back into it with just over ten minutes to go. Frederick Picom with the beautiful lob there over Flavio Roma, his first goal of the season. And a fine finish by the 23-year-old. This giving Ren a lifeline in the 79th minute. But Monaco would not be denied. A first win in six matches. Two minutes into stoppage time, Ren once again all over the place in the box. And a fine finish from the young Swede there. Pontius Barnarud. Been at Monaco some four seasons, only 21 years old, Barnarud. This just his fourth goal in those four years. Undoubtedly the pick of them. Shoddy defending once again in the Ren ranks, and that's a good finish. So welcome points here for Monaco. Three one winners. Il y a eu de, de bonnes choses. On s'est créé pas mal d'occasions. On a eu des périodes d'inattention encore malheureusement, mais bon, dans l'ensemble, c'est c'est ça qui se passe. Saying, unfortunately, his side were unable to find the breakthrough, or indeed the second goal they were looking for. But in the end, in a competitive match, emerged victorious. Something he no doubt is extremely happy about. Shabani Nanda getting another goal, his ninth of the season. 